Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlotthauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Thursday, June the 5th, 2025. In this update, we are watching a possible tropical signal in the Caribbean and Gulf, but not all models agree. The GFS is showing signs of tropical development around the 10th through the 15th, but the European model, the Canadian model, and the Icon German models are still holding back. In this update, I will show you exactly what the data says, which models you should trust, and whether or not the National Hurricane Center is likely to take notice. Let's get right into the video. So here's a look at the very latest GOES-19 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com. There will be a link in the description below this video. And as we can see here, there is no concerns of tropical development at least over the next seven days. And the reason why is we have a lot of deep layer vertical wind shear cutting across the Caribbean and even in the Gulf, which is good news, right? Because sea surface temperatures here are very, very conducive for tropical development. If something moves into these basins, especially the northwestern Caribbean and the Gulf in itself. Now, looking at the main development region, we have a pretty good Saharan dust plume that has moved off of Africa yesterday and is already making its track across the Central Atlantic and is going to be arriving on the Leeward and Windward Islands in the next couple of days. And then, of course, the Eastern Pacific is going to still cook up activity as we are keeping an eye on two areas of interest right now. Now, when we take a look at the latest seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida, you can see there is nothing to be concerned about as the National Hurricane Center clearly states here that tropical cyclone activity is not expected during the next seven days. While the National Hurricane Center is now monitoring two areas of interest, especially the one closest to central and southern Mexico here, which has an 80% chance of tropical development in the next seven days. So that's a high chance of formation with a new area that the NHC is watching closely, which now has a 30% chance of tropical development. So overall, the Eastern Pacific really active to end out May and now to begin early June. Now, let's take a look at all of our global computer models, folks, because we're going to be comparing different model runs and different models at showing you all what my thoughts are as far as as any sort of tropical development that does or may happen in the middle of June towards the end of the month. So with that being said, let's take a look first at our European model, our top of the line model, the most accurate model out there for the tropics for in literally anything. And so here's a look at it for this afternoon and you can see Nothing out there right now in the tropics. No slot, nothing in the way of significant amounts of spin in the atmosphere, including for the Gulf, which is good news because this is where a lot of us live. Yeah, if you live on Jamaica, if you live in the Cayman Islands in western Cuba, if you live in, say, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, Dominica, as well as the Dominican Republic, any of these islands over here, even Venezuela, Honduras, Nicaragua, Belize, the Yucatan Peninsula, yes, a lot of you live over here that are watching this video. So let's put this into motion. And let's see, because the European model not showing much in the way of tropical development over the next seven days. And this is all the way throughout the 12th of June. So that's good news. Nice, good surface high pressure system located over the Western Atlantic, over Bermuda. And that means the trade winds here are going to be pretty strong, anywhere between 25 to 40 knots moving through the Caribbean, and that's really strong. That's going to help to bring some drier air infiltrating into the area and still keep the strong westerly shear in place. Now, as we go forward out in time, all the way out to day 10, you can see there's still nothing out there. But instead, the East Pacific is going to get more tropical-like systems developing over there, and each of those systems will be moving generally northwestward. So now that we talk took a look at our European model. Let's take a look here at our Canadian model. 
Same parameter that we like to look at here is at 5,000 feet, and you can see there's a ridge of high pressure off the southeastern coast. Nice good trade winds here through the Caribbean. As we put this into motion over the next five days, you can see nothing really concerning over the next four days, five days. However, the Eastern Pacific really needs to be paying close attention. There will be additional tropical development there because the European model is showing it. The Canadian model is showing it. And it looks like even a second one may try to develop here but that will move generally westward and develop in the Eastern Pacific and move generally west-northwestward off the coast there of Mexico and even in Costa Rica, which is good news. So no impact to any plans if you're going to Mexico for a vacation. That's good news. And this will continue all the way throughout the next 10 days, according to our Canadian model. And for reference, here's a look at the European. Once again, there is system number one. That's the area. Actually, it's this one over here that the NHC is watching. And then we got another one there right off the coast of Mazalan and Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And then maybe a third one thereafter. But that's really, really far out on the Euro. Now, looking at the GFS model, the American model, this is the loser model. This is the outlier. This is a bullish forecast that you're about to see. And everything that you see in this video on the GFS is pretty much an outlier. But my job here is comparing different global computer models for you all, if that makes sense, right? I just don't want to use one model run one model in itself and make a prediction off that one single model okay we like to compare and be transparent with you all that watch these videos so looking at the gfs you can see eastern pacific development is going to happen the gfs is not lying about that it's being picked up by other models as well and then maybe another one right off the coast here of Tehuantepec, Mexico. But this is very broad part of that Central American gyre because you get these trade winds that blow in this general direction. And then you get westerly winds that blow in this direction. And so you see these vorticity spin ups here around the intersection that um, that that monsoonal trough in other words that's kind of located right here and anytime you get favorable environment aloft you get these spin-ups and you can see what the gf is showing but still like come on it's not giving up it literally isn't giving up i mean come on gfs wake up wake up please there is this is showing up on the model as a tropical depression maybe a weak tropical storm and maybe something else in the southern gulf We'll be looking at our ensembles more on that here in a second. And then as we go forward in time, it still wants development in the central and western Gulf. I mean, just not giving up. It's just not letting go. Uh, and I really hope they fix the GFS model soon because I'll tell you right now, every model except the GFS does not have anything concerning in the Caribbean, including our German model, the icon model that I like to use in some of my videos, especially in this situation. So when we take a look here at our German model, the icon, you can see this is the surface wind plot. You can see our system over the Eastern Pacific is going to develop there. Most likely that's what it's showing. And then as we go forward, more tropical development is expected later on in the period. So this is about day seven, close to day eight, showing maybe another tropical storm developing there in the Eastern Pacific. So my thoughts so far in this video are that the Eastern Pacific will remain active at least over the next seven to perhaps 10 days while the Caribbean remains quiet, including for the Gulf. So no threats of any tropical development at this given time as it stands right now. And as I did mention in the first 30 seconds of my video, um, I do trust the European model more as well as the Canadian model at this given time. And I could even agree, and you all can agree, even the ICON model I can trust as well. The majority, we're looking at 
the majority. Now, looking at the next 10 days, as far as your rainfall forecast goes, some areas are not going to see a whole lot of rain, while others, especially for Central America and Venezuela, are going to load up on a lot of water accumulation. And you can see down here in Venezuela, anywhere between three to six inches of rainfall is anticipated over the next 10 days, which is above average for climatology reasons. And then Costa Rica, Belize, as well as Honduras, Nicaragua. Yes, you're going to see anywhere between two to five inches of rainfall and especially over here off the coast of central and southern Mexico where we have those tropical disturbances and an enhanced phase of the MJO rising motion in the atmosphere you're anticipated to pick up possibly up to six to eight inches of rainfall over the next 10 days. Now you might be asking on why are none of the models except the GFS model showing no tropical development? Well, it all has to do on what our deep layer vertical wind shear is doing in the deep layers of the atmosphere. So here's a look at the deep layer wind shear value from the European model forecast and any areas in red here indicate that there is a deep layer of vertical wind shear that is really strong versus greener and bluer colors indicate that deep layer vertical wind shear is really light and conditions are quite favorable only if we had development in that portion. Okay, so moving this forward, you can see deep layer vertical wind shear throughout the Caribbean is going to be very unfavorable. We're talking deep layer vertical wind shear anywhere between 35 to 50 knots over the next four to five days. And this is going to continue over the next 10 days where we have this deep layer vertical wind shear coming in out of the westerly and southwesterly direction. And anytime you get that, when we get trade winds from the east, upper level winds from the west, that is going to correspond to strong westerly vertical wind shear blowing across any of these thunderstorms. And so therefore, we're not expecting any tropical development in the Caribbean or the Gulf anytime soon at this given time. But it's not just that. We also look at deep layer moisture as well from the Tropical Tidbits website. And again, this is a look at the European model. Dark brown colors indicate drier air, turquoise green blue colors indicate lots of moisture in the deep layers of the atmosphere. So from about 10,000 feet all the way up to about 32,000 feet. And as we put this into motion, we can see that there is some moisture, but Look at all the brown. Look at all that. That's not what we want to see. And it's going to be brown all the way through the next 10 days. Although there is moisture piling up down here, it's not very rich at all. And it's very limited indeed in coverage. And so therefore, on top of deep layer vertical wind shear and limited amount of moisture, it's just not conducive. And that's what the European model has been showing Although the Eastern Pacific is going to take the cake with a lot of deep layer moisture and lesser vertical wind shear, that's why the Eastern Pacific is going to remain busy as far as the tropics go. And that's because of the favorable MJO phase that is moving over this region of the tropics. Now, with that being said, here's a look at our latest ensembles in the tropics. And what we're looking for here is a lot of spaghetti plots, lines, colors and stuff moving across the Caribbean and also in the Gulf. And right now, we are not seeing any of that, which means there is no confidence. There is no signal over the next 10 days of any tropical development in the Gulf or even in the Caribbean, which is what everyone wants to hear. So far, so good in the tropics to begin early and mid-June. Now, when we look at the GEFS ensemble forecast, we can see a bit more of a signal here still popping up in the southern and western Caribbean. You can see some of the spaghetti plot of tracks indicating that there is still a minute signal of something waking up there in the Caribbean and also in the southern portion of the Gulf here, like the Bay of Campeche, right very close to the Mexico coast. 
including for the Yucatan, but also a very muted signal here too. Now with all of that out of the way, let's take a look at our latest sea surface temperatures because it's been a little bit of time since we looked at the entire Atlantic and right now, sea surface temperatures are conducive for tropical development. It's just a matter of time when the atmosphere, the background state begins to cooperate and we get something to develop out here in the deep tropics. And boy, if it does and it moves west into the Caribbean, these surface temperatures alone do not allow for tropical development. It's not like a machine, but once we do get something that develops and it moves over these Gulf waters, it supercharges these tropical storms and hurricanes and makes them even stronger than they should be. And so what we have here in the Gulf and in the Caribbean are sea surface temperatures that are very, very conducive for tropical development once something does develop later on in the season versus out here in the central and northeastern Atlantic where sea surface temperatures are running slightly below average where they should be. And you can clearly see that from our temperature anomaly standpoint on sea surface temperatures. This blue area indicates sea surface temperatures are running below average versus sea surface temperatures out here in the main development region are still running slightly above normal for this time of the year. Although with the very strong trade winds that have really increased over the last few weeks, we have seen some big time upwelling of cooler sea surface temperatures right off of Aruba as well as Venezuela in Central America. And it's a matter of time on how long this will continue and see if we get even cooler sea surface temperatures to near average or even below average there. But the Gulf and everywhere else is running above normal for this time of the year. Now, how far down does that very warm sea surface temperature water extend down to? Well, with that, here's a look at the upper ocean heat content. And I wanna be very clear in this video that upper ocean heat content does not form tropical storms or hurricanes whatsoever. What this is, it's a product of measuring how far down does the very warm, rich water extend down to for tropical storm genesis. Well, not really genesis, but to thrive, to fuel a hurricane or a tropical storm. So for an example, if we have a tropical depression that is located over here and it moves through the Caribbean, it's moving over much higher upper ocean heat content. And so therefore, there's a lot of octane fuel in the water to fuel and charge a tropical storm or hurricane to make it much stronger than what forecasts thought. And that's because if the background state is conducive, we have a lot of moisture, light shear, and very favorable sea surface temperatures, that's how we can get very intense hurricanes here in the Caribbean and even into the Gulf because the upper ocean heat content is really far above average, and it already is. You can see it right here in the Caribbean, still running slightly above average for this time of the year, including for the Gulf, but you can see down here in Venezuela, it is running below average, and that's because of the upwelling of cooler sea surface temperatures thanks to the very strong trade winds over the last couple of weeks. Now, if you found this tropical weather outlook and discussion really helpful, detailed, and informative, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that bell notification icon to get all of my notifications every time I go live on the tropics or every time I just do a live stream discussing about the tropics or going live doing a 24-7 our live stream to on live cameras and much more and also leave a like and leave a comment in the section below this video and i'll be back with you more tomorrow with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion peace out folks